Live from the campus of MIT in Cambridge, Massachusetts, it's theCUBE, covering the MIT Chief Data Officer and the Information Quality Symposium. Now, here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Paul Gillen. Well, welcome, this is theCUBE, day two of the MIT CDO Information Quality Conference here in Cambridge, Massachusetts. I'm Paul Gillen with Stu Miniman. We'll be here wall to wall today, coverage with interviews with uh, some great guests we have coming on today, beginning with Tom Davenport, who right now is finishing up his keynote presentation on uh, the subject of, of uh, data 4.0, what the future will look like, a data-driven and a machine learning driven future will look like, uh, how robots may take uh, large swaths of the workforce uh, out of, uh, out of the picture. Um, kind of an alarmist view, but also ultimately a positive one. We'll want to talk to him about that. Um, we are going to hear from several CDOs today. We have three CDOs coming on, in fact, immediately after uh, we speak to Tom. And uh, just a, a bunch of other interesting, uh, interesting guests we'll have on the program. Um, Stu, yesterday was all about, uh, there was a lot of talk about governance, a lot of talk about the role of the CDO. Um, any takeaways that, uh, that you took from, from those discussions now that you've had a, a night to sleep on it? Yeah, well, I, you know, uh, you, you mentioned that Tom Davenport's given his keynote, and he, he's, he's an excellent speaker, really excited to have him on the program. Uh, one of the things he talked about uh, is having that balance of what he called offense and defense. And governance really falls into kind of the defensive piece of it, um, but you, we need to look at the offense. So companies that are helping to create, uh, you know, new business models, uh, you know, with, with, with their data, Companies that are, you know, uh, you know, making or saving, you know, b big amounts of money. Uh, we had, you know, the DoD talked about saving. It wasn't it like, you know, six trillion dollars. So it was well, it was six billion dollars. Six billion from dollars. One, sorry, from yeah. From one pilot analytics. Yeah, so one pilot yeah. analytics, and, and we'll see. But you know, eh, you know, give or take a billion dollars here. It's all, you know, we'll end up paying for it. Ever right? Dirksen said that. A billion <laughs> here, a billion there. Eventually, it adds up to real money. <laughs> it, it, exactly. But uh, you know, Tom Davenport, it, it, it was really interesting. The other thing is kind of the role of you know, analytics and big data. And Tom said he really originally talked about three errors of analytics and he's changed it to uh, you know, you know, four errors of data. So you know, as, as we kind of get a, get a broader view and look back, it's not necessarily about analytics or any, definitely not any specific tool, uh, but it's about you know, data and data usage itself, uh, which really resonated with me. Uh, you know, we always say in the tech industry, we, we always get super excited about the next big tool, um, but it's, it's more what, uh, what we heard from the, the, the people that are creating the CDO Institute, which is, we, we need to have a, you know, uh, understanding on uh, um, you know, the, the methodology uh, that we're using. I, I, I need to understand uh, you know, how I do it and, and train it so that as the technology tools change, I can you know, stay up with it and keep my job and, and keep you know, policies in place that go above and beyond any specific technology. Yeah, and he said, Davenport says we're in the age of data 3.0, which is, which is a very messy time uh, that we are basically taking, there's so much data uh, now to, to process that we have to we can no longer handle it centrally. We need to take that process and move it out into the business, make everyone essentially a data analyst. You know, as happened when mainframes gave way to PCs, as happened when telephone operators gave way to self-dial, we have to teach people how to use tools that are, that are foreign to them. And that's why it's so messy right now. There's not only this organizational disruption of, of having to, to uh, disperse all this technology, but also just keeping up with all the new technology that's flooding in. Yeah. He had a point about uh, Hadoop has become a problem in many companies because there are so many Hadoop instances popping up that, that no one can keep track of them. There is no governance, if you will. There is no uh, control and, and really no no guidance over how to use these clusters appropriately. Yeah, uh, so much, every new technology, right, you, you get, you know, who owns it, we get that sprawl. We had, you know, uh, on the infrastructure side, there was, infra, you know, server sprawl, and then there was virtual machine sprawl. Uh, people have, you know, how much cloud am I using that I don't think of it, so, right, I, and, uh, but the, the, the positive factor that Tom gave is if we can get to that next, the 4.0 piece, that's when, you know, uh, Automation should get more involved. That's where you said robots uh, it can hopefully help out. So um, if we can work man and machine together, uh, which really uh, reminds me of what Andy McAfee and Eric Bonjolmson from the MIT Sloan School talk about, it's racing with the machine. Uh, so you know, it's not just machines are going to take over our jobs. It's we're going to need to work closely with them because you know it's been found from a research standpoint that it's when I can pair, but uh, both you know the knowledge and the creativity of the person with that you know robot and the automation together uh, that I can beat 
robots or people by themselves. But there's going to be a messy time uh, before that, before we, we reach that next stage, as happens whenever there is a disruption, as happened when the, when the uh, Industrial Revolution occurred. Yeah, right? I'm or really waiting for the time that we don't have a messy time in IT. Yeah. I, I don't expect it to happen in my <laughs> lifetime. <laughs> well, it'll keep, it'll keep us employed at least. Uh, we do have four CDOs on the, on the program today, and I think that's one of the things about this conference that really is special. Uh, this, you know, we, this is our fourth year at the event. The quality of speakers, the quality of attendees at this event is really like a like, uh, you know, few other conferences I've attended. Uh, we get people from, uh, from the White House, from the Department of Defense. We had uh, CDO of the Department of Transportation on the program yesterday. And, just, uh, and it's a very informal, sort of honest, open exchange of ideas. It's one, one reason I enjoy this, this conference. Yeah, I, I, I tell you, I, I always, they call this a symposium, right? It's not a conference. And the, the ones I've liked, right, you get, you know, 100 to 200 people and the people up on stage are often people that had been attendees in the previous years, and many of the people in the audience could be up on stage themselves. So I've gone to some small innovation conferences where it's the same. You have you know, uh, the, the coffee house of ideas that just happen in the hallway, and the quality of the guest is there. I said we're a little self-selecting. We probably don't have the you know, data 1.0 people here that you know, haven't started to look at CDOs um, because they're coming to this event. So these are people that are open to trying new things. These are the people that are you know, going out there and you know, breaking glass and uh, you know, sharing those ideas. So uh, uh, it's been exciting, and yeah, you know, we just grab some of the attendees here, we put them on the cube, and we've had some really good content uh, yeah, and a, people that and way. An event that is dominated by the attendees uh, too, not by the vendors. There are there are exhibitors upstairs, but it's a very uh, a low key, hands off approach they take. So looking forward to a great day. Uh, we will be back in uh, just uh, just a, mu a moment when uh, Tom Davenport gets free. We'll bring him down here, and then we'll have him on the cube. So this is the cube. <laughs>